Tis so sweet I trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know myself the Lord of Trust him, how I prove him more and more. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, Precious Jesus, Savior and friend, and just to rest yeah, upon His promise that He will be with me until the end. Oh, Jesus, yeah, Jesus, how I trust Him. More and more, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust him more, oh hallelujah Jesus, how I trust him. Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more, oh, glory to your name, how I trust him. This is your turn. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Oh, y'all didn't think I would check.
Welcome everyone to South Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so glad you have chosen to join us today as we worship the Lord together and have fellowship. The house of God is such a special place to be. You may have heard people refer to a church congregation as the body of Christ. This is because the Bible explains each of us in, as individual members of one whole body. We hope that you will receive a rich blessing from your worship experience today. South Park is now open. Join us each Saturday at 10.15 a.m. for services. COVID restrictions are in place, so please wear your mask. for you to join our Sabbath School panel discussions. Contact Elder Pedro McKnight 
at askthepastor7 at gmail.com and be a part of an in-depth, interactive study of the Bible each Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. At South Park, we're looking for administrators to help us develop a presence on social media. Please contact at askthepastor7 at gmail.com. Some experience with social media is helpful. When I first met Danielle, I believed she was going to be my wife. So I had to do the things that were necessary to make that happen. But it's just believing in God enough. James 2 says, faith without works is dead. We'll talk about that another time. So can you believe in God without being obedient? James 2.19 said, thou believe, believe that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Tremble, fear. The devils know that following God's commandments are vital to life or death. 1 John 3, 23, 24. Take a look at it. Something to think about. I'll meet you in the morning by the bright river's side when a sorrow's heart's drifted away. Standing at the portals when the gates open wide at the close of life's long weary day. I'll meet you in the morning, in the morning, with a heart. tuning in um, today and anyone who have decided to click in on another day uh, I'm glad you guys tuned in uh, I pray that you receive uh, um, something from this I pray that you get something um, that can draw you close to God all right um, also there's a um, a lot going on um, in this message the name of it is called confuse all right uh, is dealing with a lot of things that's called us, causing confusion, um, not just for Christians, but for people in general. Um, 
a lot of people are confused about the things that are going on concerning Black Lives Matter. Um, a lot of people are confused about politics. A lot of people are confused about prophecies being fulfilled. And these things that are happening, people are wondering, are these the end time events? Are these the things that we were talked about, uh, that we were told about growing up? Um, are they finally happening? So there's a lot of questions out there and that I want to touch on some of these things today. All right. But before we do, let's say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, um, as always, Father, I always come to you with thanks. Um, I, I thank you for the many things that you have done um, leading me to this point. Um, I always find it a privilege and an honor to spread your word to Heavenly Father. Even if I might have anxiety about getting ready at times, I still thank you for choosing me and saying that, uh, uh, seeing that you know, I was fit to, to uh, say a word um, to your people, the Heavenly Father. So I pray that they reach someone and they draw someone closer to you. Um, let it be your words that they hear the Heavenly Father and not my own. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So. I know everyone was on edge this week, all right, um, especially with the um, George Floyd case. Well, actually, it's Derek Chauvin's case, and everyone um, was on the edge, and it's sad to say that we were on the edge because we was wondering what was going to happen. We was, gonna, we was wondering if he was going to be held accountable for the things that he was doing, all right? We was wondering if uh, justice was going to be served, all right? For the things that happened, for the lack of respect that he showed George Floyd's life, on George Floyd's life, but in recent history, it has given us more than enough reason to feel that way. There's a lot of things that are happening that cause us to feel this way, wondering if justice was going to be served. All right? But, you know, certain movements, you know, say their name. You know, and it brings us to memory and it brings us to Think about the constant what did you call police brutality that we're facing. All right, and it's so many different names. It's kind of hard to even keep up with what's going on. So the Bible teaches us to be slow to anger. All right, but each case that builds up more and more anger, and I know I'm not the only one that feels like this. A lot of people are feeling the anger that is constantly coming behind these things and this is altering our feelings. All right? After each case is being built and built, the anger is being built up. Uh, it's been going on for so long and since I can remember, I was always talked about how blacks were treated in America. Uh, if, if you think about it, you know, we watch movies and uh, 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 um, uh, I remember a movie called Rosewood. I remember Mississippi burning, and these things showed us exactly the things that black people went through time and time and time and time again. And this is just some of the things that I saw growing up, and these type of movies always angered me. It's almost to the point where I felt like I was being programmed to a point, all right? But it always, it always put that anger in me. And then, like... Some of us are in a state of confusion because when we have this feeling, when it comes to our feelings and, of being angry and being tired, we, uh, our purpose during this particular time starts to change. In this time of uncertainty, it starts to change. So I'm going to call out a couple of things that are causing us to change or that is causing us to have these feelings of, of anger and confusion. Because although that I was taught about our black history and about the things that went on, I was also taught the word of God growing up. And one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of the things that people are pushing is causing us to be in conflict with what the word teaches us. All right? I'm going to read this verse. James chapter 1, verse 19 uh, through 20. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not righteousness of God. Alright? So, keep that text in mind. Keep that verse in mind. Alright? Be slow. Um, uh, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Alright? Keep that in mind. So, looking back, I remember, you know, a couple of cases stick out. Amber Geiger, 
the police officer that walked into, um, I think his name was Bolton's, Bolton's apartment and killed him. Thinking she was in her apartment and that he was the intruder. Just thinking about that, this man was in his apartment, she walked in, said a little bit, and then ended up shooting him. You guys know the details, you know the story. And you know the anger and the rage that you felt at the time. Me personally, just being honest with you guys, I was angry. You know, you hear these cases, along with the experience that you have in your own life, it just builds up a lot of anger in you. And like I said, the best thing that I like about the case, and this is the part where it gets confusing, where it shouldn't be confusing, is that when the brother uh, of the victim was in court, he forgave Amber Geiger in court. And what he did was, is, let me get to the point. What he said was is that um, he forgave her, but not only did he forgive her, he wished her the best life. And he was thinking the best life for you, this is his own words, the best life for you is to have a closer relationship with Jesus. That's what he was telling her in court. Now, when everyone heard that, I'm pretty sure a lot of people were feeling kind of confused about it. Like, I don't know if that was the right time and place to do that. But the, uh, the world attacked him. A lot of people were saying that's that slave mentality. And when, you know, this person was saying that, I was like, hold on, what do you mean that's a slave mentality? What he was saying was that back then, slave owners would do whatever they want to to their slave. And then they would try to control, like, I'm talking about rape, kill, sell, doing all these things to their slaves. And then they would try to control their emotions with the word of God. Try to tell them that you should forgive me for my actions. If not then you're going to be on the bad side of God. They would try to use the word of God in that way to get people to, to control their emotions, to control their way of thinking. So that's what people were saying that um, the brother of the victim was doing. What he was doing at that time was forgiving her. And he was offering her a Christ-like, he was offering her saying that you should, in your best life, you should uh, 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 in order to obtain that best life the best thing I think for you is to have that relationship with God but when it comes <laughs> when it comes down to situations like that uh, situations that we're facing today when he does something like that that's not the only case another case is when George Floyd uh, when it happened when Derek Chauvin uh, did what he did and showed that lack of respect for his life uh, a guy by the name of Michael Porter Jr., NBA player, he came out and he said that we should pray for George Floyd and his family, but we also should pray for Derek Chauvin and his family. Now, when he said that, the backlash he got from that was unreal, from his co-workers, from everyone. You can imagine when you put somebody down on Twitter, what's going to happen. So everyone was saying that, no, now is not the time for forgiveness. Now is the time for justice. They, and that's what they kept coming at him at. They kept coming at him with, uh, 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 you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, that's not the way that it's supposed to be. So I'm asking the question, which one comes first? Does forgiveness come first or does justice come? Which one would it be? The world tells you that they want justice. And just as soon as they get justice, then it's on to the next. They want more justice, more justice, more justice. I'm not telling you that there's, there shouldn't be a need for justice. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that can there be forgiveness and justice in the same room? So, um, what I'm telling you guys is that we're not supposed to be confused about these things. The Word of God teaches us how to handle these situations and how to navigate through situations like this. The Bible teaches us that uh, our feelings toward these things, uh, should, our first reaction shouldn't be that. All right? Because this is not the first time that law enforcement have killed or wrongfully killed someone. All right? 
And uh, we're going to go to a couple of passages in the Bible. All right. We're going to go to um, Acts chapter 5. The Sadducees in Acts chapter 5 were throwing the apostles in jail. All right. In chapter 6, when Stephen's story begins, he was falsely accused uh, of blasphemy, talking against the law of Moses. And in chapter 7, he was wrongfully murdered. Jesus, who was truly an innocent man, but was still killed by law enforcers. But the point that I'm trying to make is, is that while Stephen was being killed, he prayed for his enemies. Lord, do not charge them with this sin. The same thing with Jesus when he was in the midst of his crucifixion. He says, forgive them for they know not what they do. The Bible teaches us how to handle these situations. In those two situations, justice did not come first. Forgiveness came first. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 43 and, um, through 44 it says, You have heard that uh, it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now, the world teaches us to seek justice first and find forgiveness later. But the brother of the victim forgave the person who killed his brother and was talked about for doing so. So, what I'm saying is, is that we let people get on Twitter, Instagram, social media, some type of platform, and they end up speaking and telling us how to feel and how we should handle these situations. What I'm telling you is that that's not what should be for us. For us that say that we follow Christ, these things, forgiveness, comes before justice. We have to stop being so quick to anger. We're so quick to have something to say. We're so quick to pass judgment on certain situations when we don't have the full scope of it. So, what I'm saying is, is that in order to get ahead of the curve, in order to get above this confusion, we have to turn to the word of God instead of the word of uh, the lawyer of the victim. We have to stop going to, honestly, Al Sharpton. We have to stop going to these different leaders and getting our feelings, our opinions from these different people. All right? So, but there are a couple of other things. You know, whether you're in the world or you're in the church, people believe... They love to put them on you. They love to put their point of views on you. They love to push it in your face and make you feel like you have to choose a side. So, next I'm going to go into the next thing that confuses a lot of people is politics. I know a lot of people, are, uh, they feel some type of way when you bring up the whole politics thing. A lot of times people come to you and they be like, are you Democrat or are you Republican? Are you a registered voter? If not, you need to become one and vote. Now, me personally, I don't see voting as a salvational issue. All right. So I'm not the one to condemn people for voting. All right. But it becomes a problem when you align your beliefs with Democratic or Republican views 100 percent. Everybody uh, was on board with Obama until he started pushing same sex marriage. All right. <laughs> After that, people started to part ways with the Obama idea of change, but a lot of people stayed on. A lot of people didn't jump off. And now, whenever they pray, it's not, you know, at the, for the people that stayed on and started to, to, to embrace democratic views, the route that they're taking now is that they're not just praying to Jesus, they're teaching people to pray to several different guys. We all heard it. And at the end, it's a man and a woman. That's the direction that they're going in. And a lot of people are confused about these things because they have taken on some of the views of the Democratic Party. Even the Republican Party. They have taken on the views of President Trump. And don't think that there was a Christian rioting at the Capitol. There were some Christians <laughs> rioting at the Capitol just as well. All right? So don't think that it's just a Democrat Republican thing. Both sides 
have an agenda. Both sides have something that they want to push on you. Obama came in and, and, and said that he wanted change and equality. Well, now that you picked up that slogan and you're running with it, now there's equality for same-sex marriage. There's equality for a, a lot of things that goes against our Christian values. So, uh, one time a member told me, hit me with the famous quote, you have to choose the lesser of two evils. And this is when uh, Hillary Clinton and, and, and President Trump was running for office. This is when they was campaigning. I like what this guy said. Uh, I looked it up. It was a guy named Michael Neal. All right. And he said, um, if it feels like you're choosing between the lesser of two evils, don't. There's always a higher choice. You don't have to. I hate when people make you feel like you have to choose between the two. And if you don't vote, then you don't have a voice. If you don't vote, then you can't say anything or you can't make any complaints or nothing like that. But I should not have to choose between the two. All right. In Judge, I'm, I'm sorry, not Judges, but in Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 through 14, um, it reads, It came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said unto him, Art thou for us or are for I mean or for our adversaries? He said, No. In different translations it says nay. In another translation, uh, translation it says neither. So what he said was that no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. What it was is that he had two, well, <laughs> Joshua presented him with two choices. But he came with a third choice, saying that I am on the Lord's side. So we don't have to choose between these two sides. Don't let anyone push you into voting. Don't let anyone push you on a side saying that you have to pick up one of these things. That's what confusion comes in when we start to adopt these political views. So, uh, in that instance, we have another choice. We have a higher choice. Now, like I said, I'm not condemning anyone if they vote. That's not a big issue. I voted back when Obama was running for president. All right. So that's not a big issue if you vote or not. That's not a, a, a you will lose your salvation type of thing. But you do have to be careful about what you're bringing into your home, what you're bringing into your uh, um, belief. Um, your kids are, are looking at this. The people around you are looking at these things. And you have to think about it. with everyone looking at you. Do you want to be known as a political leader or do you want to be known as someone that points people to Christ? Some people put on a lot of these political hats and they like to, to, to do these political things and push people into these uh, political routes and they're more known for, their, for them pushing political things than there are for uh, Christian values. They're more pushing people toward political things than things of the kingdom. So what do you want to be known for? All right. So don't let these things confuse you. Don't let the way of the world confuse you. Every time election come around, I get a hundred text messages from people or things I don't even know that sending me something. All right. Always trying to get me to vote. Always trying to get me to do certain things, saying that I have to choose, and that's just not it. I don't have to choose between two evils. All right. So uh, the last thing that confuses us. All right. And, and don't get lost. There's a lot of things I know I'm kind of all over the place. But I'm talking about confusion and the things that are confusing us today. And another thing that is starting to confuse people <laughs> uh, um, is fear. Fear is, is being used to confuse a lot of people. Uh, when the vaccine was introduced, people said that it was the mark of the beast. Now that we know more about it, the vaccine, people still think that it is tied to the mark of the beast. All right, and that's constantly being done. All right, people used to say the mark was uh, barcode. Some people used to say it was 
Social Security. Some people said there was Ronald Wilson Reagan himself. Uh, people said that it was chips. There are a number of things that people keep saying and tying the mark of the beast to, but we can go off history and see that we have constantly been getting this wrong. We have constantly been tying uh, uh, certain prophecies to something that we should be tying it to. So, but <laughs> I just want to tell you that I'm not here to tell you exactly what the mark of the beast is, but the Bible does give us a description of what the mark is. I am here to tell you that you cannot accidentally take the mark of the beast. Alright? That's not something that uh, you can be tricked into doing. Alright? I know this because the, uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 9. It says that uh, then another angel, a third one, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast and his image... And receives the mark on his forehead um, um, or, or on his hand. The point that it was making is that worship is the key here. That is something that you will willingly, I mean, willingly do. All right. That is not something that you will be tricked into doing. Trust me. When it comes down to it, you will know what you're doing. If if the vaccine was the mark of the beast. That means that a lot of children or a lot of people that don't have a say-so in it would be taking the mark of the beast if that was the vaccine, all right? We have to stop spreading this fear that the vaccine is it. I'm not saying go get the vaccine, all right? Don't get it twisted. I'm, that's not what I'm promoting here, all right? What I'm saying is, is that let's stop tying things to uh, uh, that the Bible speaks of to the things that it, it, it has nothing to do with. All right? A lot of people are scaring people or putting people in fear because they keep trying to say that this is it, this is that, you need to do this, you need to do that. And it's causing a lot of confusion. All right? So I just want to tell you guys that if you take the vaccine, that doesn't mean that you have the mark of the beast. All right? That is something that we don't need to promote. All right? If it was like that, I mean, we have to take the whole scripture and not part of the scripture. The scripture tells us is that uh, 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 in the last days, it's going to be about worship. <laughs> a lot of people um, a lot of people are afraid of a lot of things. A lot of, a lot of the fear that people are going through, some of it is reasonable. I understand that. It is reasonable. Some of it is just because you don't understand doesn't mean that it still isn't fear. They still have that fear. We have to be wise in these situations. We have to be the voice that God has called us to be in these situations. We cannot let other people take charge and then we follow along with them. Because then you'll end up tying yourself to a, a movement that goes against your Christian values, that goes against your Christian beliefs. You don't even want to do that if it is in the last days. Because some people compromise and they never come back from it. So you have to be careful about what you're tying yourself to. There's a reason for all this confusion. There's a reason. There, don't think that it's not organized chaos because it is. There's, it's leading to something. And you don't want to be caught up in it. Or you don't want to be misleading people. And not saying that you're purposely doing that. But you do have to watch how you're tying prophecy into certain things. Because you can be leading people astray. Just as soon as it's not what you say it is, people are going to look at you sideways. And it's not just going to be you. They're going to look at your faith. They're going to look at your religion. They're going to look at everyone in your camp. And then they're going to say, that's a false religion. That's false. And then next thing you know, you have lost your witness. So you have to be careful about how you're presenting God's word. You have to be careful about who you're tying yourself with, who you are aligning yourself with. All right. And so that's the message that I have for you guys today is to not be a part of the confusion. Don't be pushing the confusion. And you don't have to sit in confusion. You can... Go to God's word and see for yourself. Study for yourself. Get that relationship with God for yourself. 
I pray this a lot, and I know people hear it a lot, but I pray for God to navigate us through these times. There is no way that I'm going to look to Pastor Miller, Pastor Lewis, or anybody else to guide me through this. I have to look to the Holy Spirit. I have to look at what God has for me in his word. And you're not going to get it all at one time. Trust me, you're not going to get it all at one time. You have to be able to be patient. Just like God is patient with you, you need to learn how to be patient just as well with his word. A lot of times we get frustrated and we don't understand this and we don't understand that. But I guarantee you some of the pastors that you listen to, some of the people that you listen to on YouTube, there are some things in, the, in, in God's word that they don't understand just as well. They don't have the answers to everything. All right. But as far as the times we live in now, when it comes to this confusion about uh, 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 um, how we should feel uh, when these cases continue to rise, how we should feel when uh, the vaccine and, and, and people try to point you in the direction with political things. God has given us an answer for these things. We don't have to go to uh, we don't have to go find a prophet for these things or we don't have to go and find someone else for these things. That's something that is plain in God's word. And my prayer today is for us to continue to dig in the word and to gain that close relationship with him. So we would know what to do when we're faced with confusion. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, um, you, you, you brought me to this point. You brought me to this point to uh, spread the word, uh, to um, preach to your people, to give them what you have given to me. I pray to Heavenly Father that I didn't misrepresent you in any type of way. Um, I never want to be found a false preacher to Heavenly Father. I never want to be the one to drive people to confusion or drive people away from you. So I pray to Heavenly Father that you, 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 you be with this message, Father. And that if someone clicks on it later on, that they will understand and get what you're trying to, 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 to reach to them, to Heavenly Father. What you're trying to get them to understand and what you're trying to get us to understand. You're trying to bring us to a certain point, to Heavenly Father. And I pray that we all make it to that point that you're trying to bring us to. Um, in this time, a lot of people are losing their way as far as to uh, what is uh, uh, your will for them. What you would have us to do in these moments. What you would have us to do in the midst of this confusion. So I pray that we look to you for guidance. That we look to you and get an understanding of the Heavenly Father. So I pray for those who run across this video. I pray for those who come across this message. And that they see you in this message the Heavenly Father and nothing else. That they see your truth and nothing else. In Jesus name I pray. Amen.
Just now.